Are you still confused about the difference between the standard deviation and the standard error? Let's see if I can help. As an example, let's imagine a population of polar bears. Maybe what we are interested in is the weight of adult polar bears. If we could weigh every single adult polar bear in the population, we might describe what we know about their weights by calculating a mean or the average size of an adult polar bear. But not every adult polar bear weighs exactly the same amount. Some bears are smaller and some bears are larger. So in addition to the mean, we use what is called the standard deviation to describe how much individual variability there is around that mean. We can see how this is the case by looking at the formula for the standard deviation. You can see that to calculate this number, we first get all of the differences between each individual and the overall population mean, and we square the differences so that they are now all positive numbers. We add all of those squared differences together, as indicated by the summation symbol. However, we need to adjust this number for the size of the population or for the number of squared differences we are adding together, which is why we divide by n, or in this case, the total number of polar bears in the population. At this step, what we have calculated is called the variance. In order to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of the variance. When you plot the weights of all the individual adult polar bears as a probability distribution, it looks something like this. The curve will be centered around the mean, or 500 kilograms in this case, and the spread of the observations around the mean is described again by the standard deviation. If you have the ability to measure every individual in a population, then you don't need statistics and you won't have a standard error. But most often, this is not the case. Usually, we can only measure a subset or sample of the population, and we use what we learn from that sample to make inferences about the whole population. This is why it is called inferential statistics. If we have a population of 1,000 polar bears, there is no way we will be able to measure the weight of every bear. Therefore, we are going to weigh a subset of animals. From this sample of polar bears, we can calculate a mean and standard deviation. The mean and standard deviation we calculate are called statistics, and they are our best estimation of the true population values or population parameters, which are otherwise unknown. From this information, we can draw a similar distribution that is our best representation of what adult polar bear weights look like in the population. Not every sample will look the same or have the same mean and standard deviation. Therefore, we know there is some uncertainty about our calculated values and how closely they approximate the true population parameters. One of the best ways a researcher can try to improve their certainty in their estimate is to increase the size of the sample. In this case, we could choose to weigh 20 polar bears instead of just five. However, one very important thing to remember is that the estimation of the population standard deviation is independent of sample size. We cannot predict whether weighing more polar bears is going to increase or decrease our estimation of the standard deviation. What we do know is that on average, the estimation will not change and is therefore an unbiased estimator. Why then are we more confident about our estimate of the population mean when we weigh more bears? Consider this. What if we could take all possible samples of size 5 from the population, calculate the sample means, and plot them on a probability distribution? What would that look like? It would look something like this. The average of all the sample means would be equal to the population mean, but much like how not all individual bears weigh the same, not every sample will have the same mean, so we see variability around the mean. Here you can see I have plotted the means for our two samples of size 5. The important thing to understand here is that as the size of your samples increase, the spread of the distribution of sampling means becomes smaller. As I mentioned, these are probability distributions. Therefore, as sample size increases, the probability of having a sample mean that is not representative of the population mean decreases. 
The statistic that measures the amount of variation among sample means around the true population mean is the standard error. Thus, as sample size increases, the standard error decreases, and the standard error is used to represent the precision of the estimate of the mean. Let's come back to reality though. Usually, you're only going to be taking a single sample from the population, so how do we know what the standard error is? The standard error can be calculated from the standard deviation you have calculated from your sample and the size of your sample n using the formula you see here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions about the difference between the standard deviation and the standard error, feel free to leave me a comment below. If you liked this video and want to be notified as more videos become available, be sure to click the subscribe button.